actually uh, find ways to encourage people like myself, older women, uh, to give of our resources. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a grandmother and I've been through a lot and I've traveled a lot and I think there are many women like myself. Some people think we're pretty wacky because we're the old hippie, still carrying the, you know, the hippie torch maybe, but uh, I, I do think that whenever I've been to a rainbow gathering, for instance, I've been to quite, quite a few, that something starts to come through and we, um, we have a wisdom that I think older women uh, can call upon and, and I would like to uh, say that if anyone here wants to uh, get in touch with me and talk about this kind of thing I'd be absolutely delighted to do so and I, I do think that there's a way forward. Um, I think that's a great point. I appreciate that statement. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello. Um, yeah, a few comments. Um, start and then I'll have three short questions or to, to keep them closer, try to keep them short. Um, I don't completely agree on the criticism on Christianity, but just okay. maybe we can speak about that later. So that's okay. um, one thing maybe um, is I see the, uh, the positioning of your ideas, of your comments, maybe a bit US focused, maybe Anglo-Saxon focused. And um, that comes a little bit on your comments. Uh, I'd like to know what you think about the um, European social model. Um, do you see it as uh, something that could could be a positive sign? Um, something that's been challenged a lot by the uh, Anglo-Saxon model lately in the late 20 years. Um, second question: I'd like to think what you I'd like to know what you think about the. Um, South American movements in Ecuador, in Bolivia, in Venezuela, uh, in Chile, and um, like to see, I'd like to know if you think those are sort of uh, green shots towards the uh, right direction. And finally, um, I'd like to know if you consider yourself as an anarchist, and do you consider the uh, Zeitgeist project as an anarchist project? Well, to answer your third question. Thank you. Sure. The anarchist is just a label. It doesn't mean anything. I don't consider it anarchy. And I don't give it any title because it's based on a train of thought. It, you don't, if anyone throws labels at you when you talk about these things, they're, not, they're either denying the information or they have no other frame of reference than to try and find a way to associate you with what they've already come, become familiar with. So the labeling of anarchy, the labeling of communism, the labeling, labeling of socialism, excuse me, the labeling, is, uh, is, uh, is irrelevant to me because when someone says that, I say, well, fine, but why don't you look at the train of thought that goes into this? And that's what it comes down to. So I don't consider myself an anarchist at all. I can, mm. use, I can use other terms such as, uh, such as uh, radical. I think that not I'm a radical, that the idea is radical based on the values that, and the structures that we see today. As far as your second question, in uh, South America and Latin America, I see no difference in um, and what they're doing and what we're doing, but they're just doing it in a different angle. They have to, they have, they have all sorts of problems that have originated. In fact, I don't see any difference between the problems that they suffer, you know, just the poverty stricken globalization and all the things that have, that have come rampant in those countries. They're fighting the same type of hegemonic monetary institution that wants to steal their resources or take over their leaders, all the things that John Perkins, John Perkins has talked about, the corporatocracy. So I, don't, I, uh, I, I see them as, as working in the best way they can. I think they could use um, some more information. Hopefully they would come and be a part of well, this larger order as opposed to continuing to battle uh, the system and thinking that's the end, because that isn't exactly the end. Uh, the system that's an emergence, excuse me. The systems that's there, excuse me, I'm rambling here. And the first question, the first question which is uh, Anglo-Saxon versus European, uh, First European social systems, that was it? I don't see any difference between the two either. There's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a matter of degree. So the Anglo-Saxon, American, let's get rid of those terminologies. America is the most capitalist, the most free enterprise, deregulation, private, privatization, and the culture you see is a, is a result of it. And then it gets a little bit more graduated when you get into, say, a country that has nationalized health care, but a country that actually takes care of its people to a certain degree. Uh, if you, you know, Canada and the United States are right across the way from each other, they have the same basic system, but 
Canada has much less stratification. This is another point I made here, which is very important. I think that's actually the, the pivotal issue that I've come to realize right now, is if you compare the stratification degree of various countries, it begins to make sense, the extremity of the behavior. And I think that's a, that's a very fascinating organization. So European model, of course, is better than the American model, but only to a degree. It's, it's great to have the system support you. That's all the Venus Project is, is having a system designed to support people, as opposed to everybody fighting amongst themselves to get what they want. We want to make a system that works for the betterment of everyone in a holistic sense. It's just that simple, so I hope I answered your question. Oh, I have a question. Sure. Um, in regards to the fact that we're in the West, although I haven't quite figured out where the West is, um, what is the, how are things in, let's say, the developing countries, how are they receiving Zygast? Obviously, there's, you know, technological issues with the internet and so forth, but I can see that we're going to come planes forward, and will it be like how the developing world is now, which is they're going to fight for, fight for capitalism because they know no other? So that's my first question. And my second question is in regards to education. Um, I kind of see that, I, I, stu I, well, I, say I studied, I don't really know if I did, psychology and sociology. So I kind of look at things from a social sciences point of view. And if we are ready to make this transition and change, it sounds really weird when I say like focus on young people I you know no one wants to indoctrinate anybody but right. wouldn't be the younger generation especially as they're the, the people that are market to, marketed towards anyway they're the kind of new consumerist society that we should be reaching out to our younger younger youth and saying there is an alternative to all of this so in regards to I see education up there in the Venus project I can see that being so much more achievable because the mindset is already there but how do we start to have young people adopting the sort of mindset that we would want them to take forward with the Venus Project. So kind of two questions, the developing world and the education of today's youth. Thank well, you. I, sure, thank you. I think the developing world is, um, is it, I don't know if, honestly, the statistics I've seen of, of people that have joined the movement, oddly enough, haven't come from the more impoverished countries, which I find interesting. I really think still, I think it has to do with their awareness. I don't think, they have certain technology there, but there are, obviously, there are, Many countries do not have the internet still. No one has a computer. Uh, we take it for granted, for sure, in this, in this uh, environment. But I, I think in time, a more grassroots campaign, I think they would come aboard if they understand just the basic tenets of it. Um, I can only hope. I, you know, it's, communication is, of course, the most relevant issue. Back to the other points that were made, and actually coming to your second question, the most susceptible are the ones that need change, that recognize the necessity for change, which is the majority, as far as I'm concerned, whether they realize it or not. I mean, if you tell people what the possibilities are, if someone can be very happy living in, in a world that uh, has been very restrictive of them to a certain degree, they can, they, can, they can frame it out. But once they see people that have something else and they can't block out, that's why it goes back to social stratification, and they can't block out all the things that everyone else has that they think they should have, it becomes a sickness. So when it comes to children, children are the most susceptible for influence. 